Amen. While you are standing, I'll invite you to turn with me to the book of James, chapter 2. And before we read that, I want to say it is good to have some special friends of mine in service with us this morning. Good to have brother and sister O'Banion, friends of ours, ministers of the gospel that are here from Indiana. They have come through to see my family, and I have had a great time over the last day or two fellowshipping with them. Brother O'Banion was in my father's church in Indiana and was a great and is a great soul winner, loves the things of God, and we're glad they can be with us. Maybe we'll hear from them a little later on this evening. Amen. But God is good. He's going to help us. James chapter 2, and I'm reading... Beginning at verse 24, James chapter 2 and verse 24. This is what James said. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers. Everybody say the messengers. She had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. Mm -hmm. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. God knows how to send messengers he knows how to begin something good in a person's life he knows how to initiate the beginning stages of a great work and I want to talk a bit about that on a Sunday morning I want to preach a message I'm entitling receiving the messengers receiving the messengers. Tell the person next to you, I want to receive everything God has for me today. Amen. 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 God bless you. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> let's take a second and let's let's go in our minds to the story of Rahab, or as you would hear it pronounced in Hebrew, Rahab. She's a woman of renown and at one point infamy, well known for the wrong reasons, because the Bible calls her the harlot. She is the First point of contact in Jericho when Joshua sent the two spies into the land and God's people were coming to the land and they were going to fulfill the word of the Lord that he had said that you will receive the land and you will occupy the land. This is the land of promise. I'll just say at the outset this morning, God has promises for us. God has promises for us. He's got promises for you. The Bible has great promises for you. But there's a difference between receiving the promise and possessing the promise. They say that possession is nine-tenths of the law, Brother Godair. If you're going to go take over a house you own, you got to take possession of the house first. You can have all the paperwork you want, but as long as their bed's in there and as long as their kitchen table's in there and as long as their car's parked in the driveway, it's not totally yours. There's great promises for us today, but all it is is a piece of paper until you take the time to say, I'm going to get my promise. 
It's just words on a page, unfulfilled in their entirety until you say, I want it, and I want it now. Don't let anybody talk you out of the promises. God told Joshua, he told Moses, he told Caleb, he said, the land is yours. Go in and possess the land. This is the promised land. It's got the word promise built right into it. Promised land. <laughs> and there's a whole lot of people in that land that was ready to say, no. This promise is not yours. This land is not yours. You can't have this land. This land is not for you. And there's a lot of people that are ready to tell you that there are things in the Bible that are not for you. But you got to read the fine print. You got to take the time to turn the pages. You got a time to read the documents and say, wait a minute, the Bible says I can have it. If anybody tells you you can't have the Holy Ghost and you can't speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance, you need to read the fine print of the contract because the Bible says the promise is unto you. Unto me? Yeah, it's unto you. And if you get that far, then they'll try to tell you but it's only for that generation. But keep reading because it's also to your children. See, that's the next generation. And then they'll say, well, it was only for the Jews. Oh, but keep on reading because the Bible says it's to all that are afar off. That's code word for the Gentiles. Well, not everybody can have it. It's just a special gift. Keep reading because it's as many as the Lord our God shall call. You've got to push into the promise. You've got to walk up and down in the promise. You've got to make up your mind. I'm not only going to receive the promise, I'm going to possess the promise. You can have the Holy Ghost and speak with tongues this morning. Don't let that scare you. It's the greatest gift in the world. It's, the, it's better than that drunk that you got on a while back. It's better than that high that you got the first time you'd inhaled. It's better than one night stands. It's better than any superfluous thrill that the devil tries to bedazzle you with. Oh, this promise is a joy that's greater than all those joys. That's the pleasure of sin for a season. But there's a joy unspeakable and a full of glory. Praise God. And you got to make up in your mind, I'm going to get my promise. Some, everybody say, it's for me. It's for me. And, and what, I'm, what I want to try to capture this morning is how God infiltrates a place. Jericho is a template for how God begins an initial work, a small work, a seemingly insignificant work, but it is the beginning of great things. Rahab was the beginning of great things. It's amazing that God let a Gentile receive the promise before he gave it to the whole nation. Before God gave it to all of those Hebrews that were coming in, he said, I'm going to give you a little peek of what my plan's going to be, just in case you thought this was a racial thing. Just in case you thought only certain people could have access to this, I'm going to let you know that I'm going to, I'm going to let anybody that calls on my name have access to this. I'm, going to, I'm convinced that God purposely goes to the lowest strata to prove his glory, to demonstrate his glory. In one place, he said, I didn't call you because you were the greatest. I called you because you were the least. I didn't call you, call you because you were the wealthiest. I called you, called you because you were the most poor. God likes to grab a hold of somebody that has nothing 
and make something out of them. Praise God. There's people in here that when you came to God, you didn't have two pennies to rub together, but ah, wait till God gets done with you. I wasn't much when he found me, but look what the Lord has done. And to make sure that, to make sure that I never get lifted up and I never become proud or arrogant or egotistical, let me never forget where he brought me from. What a setting. What a, what a case study. Rahab, Rahab the harlot. People would say it doesn't go any lower than that. But I think God was doing something and illustrating something because, because to God, sin is sin. You can look and say, well, I'm better than this person. At least I'm not like that person. We are all in sin. And I could even make the case that Rahab was more righteous than many around her because she received the messenger. How many, how many people had to be spoken to before someone received them? How many attempts were made by these two men? Notice, notice that one place calls them spies. That's, that's from the perspective of the people being infiltrated. But from the people that were on the outside that were coming in, they weren't spies, they were messengers. It depends which side of the equation that you're going to be on. You got to make sure you get on the right side of things. You got to make sure you get on the right side of what God's doing. I'm not trying to resist what God's doing. I'm trying to help what God's doing. How many doors had to be knocked on? How many conversations had to be engaged in before somebody said, I like what you're saying? Aren't you glad for the day somebody came to you? Aren't you glad for that day? Where would you be if somebody hadn't walked up to you and said, come with me to my father's house? Maybe you had walls up. Maybe you had big, tall walls, thick walls. The walls of Jericho are infamous. People build walls because, because they don't want to be invaded. They want to protect themselves. There are protective powers in this world, ruling and dominant forces in this world that are intent on keeping the status quo. They're protecting their region. Jericho was dominant. And there will be a dominant power wherever God is going to do a work. Every place God's going to do a work, there's going to be a Jericho. There's going to be a Goliath. There's going to be a Philistine, an Ammonite, an Amalekite, a Midianite. There's going to be some kind of a power that says you cannot come into this place. You're not welcome in this place. And to that dominant power, these were spies. But God's kingdom is going to fill all the earth. There's nobody going to resist the kingdom of God. Old song says, everything that's not of Jesus shall come down. Shall come down, shall come down. Everything that's not of Jesus shall come down. I'm here to tell you right now, if you aren't in Jesus Christ, you need to get in Jesus Christ. That car you're driving, it's going to break down. That house you're living in will one day fall to the ground. That body that you think might last forever one day will be in a hospital bed. Everything that's not of Jesus shall come down. But if I'm in Christ, I'm a new creature. And the kingdom of God comes into the world. Many times it comes in very small. Very small. It's almost so small you don't notice it. Very humble. Very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not obvious. Very unobtrusive. Wouldn't even notice it. 
The Bible says to despise not the day of small things. It's the world of the seed. It's the God of Sabaoth who knows that if he can begin something tiny, it can grow into something great. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of a mustard seed that is the least of all seeds. Rahab was a mustard seed. Wasn't much to look at. She was the least of everybody. But oh, God just needs somebody to give him a spot. He just needs one little opportunity. If you're here this morning, let God get down on the inside of your heart and start doing a work. It might not be much. It might not seem like much. People might laugh at you. But give God a chance. Open the door just a little bit and God can begin to do a good work. That though it's the least of all seeds, when it is grown, it's the greatest. That's how God operates. God operates on a principle that theologians call gradualism. Gradualism. God just takes his time. He's not in a hurry. He just knows that if the seed gets in place, the seed will do its job. Here's the secret of the seed. The seed contains the blueprint of the whole forest. Praise God. Let me say that again. That little tiny apple seed. You ever seen an apple seed? Little bitty dark seed hiding on the inside. Sometimes you take two bite, a big a bite and you get one in your mouth. That little DNA packet. It holds the entire apple orchard locked up, latent, lying dormant on the inside. There's stuff lying dormant on the inside of the word of God. There's a life that you cannot even imagine lying dormant in the word of God. Some of you, when you came, you stumbled into the church with a hangover. That was 40 years ago. Now look what the Lord has done. On the inside of this preached gospel, there was blessing. There was abundance. There was marriage. There was financial opportunity. There were children. There were grandchildren. There were missionary possibilities. There were ministry possibilities. All of that lies dormant and latent in the seed. Don't ask God to do it in one week or two weeks. Let, let the cycle do what the cycle is designed to do. The Bible says that the word of God and the kingdom of God, it's, it's first the blade, then it's the ear, then it's the full corn in the ear. God will bring things to pass in my life if I'll just let him work. Let me put it real plain. Come back to church. Come back to church tonight and let that seed keep falling on you. Come back to church on Tuesday. You might not understand every mystery. You might not be exactly where you want to be, but get back to the house of God because gradually, gradually, gradually. That's how God operates. Have you ever wished your lawn would stop growing? Have you ever said, this thing is a monster? I just waited it last week, and there's already green fingers creeping over the curb. Now, it wasn't like that at first. It was just bare dirt at first, but somebody put a seed in the ground. Didn't look like much. But when you set in motion the working of the kingdom of God, what doesn't look like much becomes much. I, I heard somebody sing a song one time, little is much if God is in it. Oh, let God just start that little work. Let God start that out of the way hidden work. Receive what the Lord wants to do in your life. Listen to that home Bible study. Listen to the Biblos podcast. Listen to the preaching of the word of God. Listen to your grandmother that's been trying to get you to church all these years. Listen to your wife that has told you that the answer is not in the dollar. The answer is in the altar. Let God start that work. Let God infiltrate Pray 
Praise God. I just need a Rahab. You don't have to be sophisticated. I just need somebody to receive it. God does that. God finds these little out-of-the-way places. It, it, it might be just a little single girl, 15, 16 years of age, and that's all God needs. His angel shows up. All he's got to say is, Hail, thou that art highly favored. <laughs> Blessed above all women. There's going to be something. There's going to be a seed. And it's going to be planted in your womb. And that which comes forth from you is going to be the most high. You'll call his name Jesus because he'll save his people from their sins. I like what Mary then said. She said, blessed is the word of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. Somebody's got to receive it. It's just words until you receive it. It's just words until you say, I'll take it. It's just... Praise God, praise God, praise God. Let God get started. If you'll let God get started, it'll start growing. That's what gradualism's all about. Look at, look at Genesis. He tells Adam and Eve, go out, fill the earth. That's gradualism. It starts with two people and seed. And then it fills the earth. Noah. And the seven that were with him, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. And from that, that small beginning, this explosion of growth comes. Abraham, Sarah, if you'll follow my word, I'll make your children like the sand by the seashore and like the stars of the heaven. And so shall thy seed be. God just needs that small opportunity where somebody says, I'll do it. I'll have it in my life. I'm praying somebody says, I'll do it this morning. I'll just, I'll just, let me jump to the end of my message, here in the middle of my message. We want to plant you. We want to plant you today. We want to plant you with Jesus. What do you mean, Brother Urshan? I mean, we want you to repent of your sins. Jesus said, except a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, whoo, I know you think your life is great, but if you'll die in Jesus, you'll live in Jesus. If you are baptized with him in the likeness of his death, you'll be in the likeness of his resurrection. I want to plant somebody with Jesus today. To be baptized in Jesus' name, to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, that is the gospel, and it is the beginning of great things. Rahab was a part of this gradualism. When Joshua got to the promised land, they come into the land, and they say, take the land, and he did, and they became the nation of Israel. God goes from the small to the big. When the Bible calls him the Lord of hosts, it doesn't mean he just commands great hosts. In Hebrew, it means he's the God that takes small things and makes them a great host. It includes the idea of growth and propagation in life. God just needs somebody to let him get started. He just needs a manger. He just needs a Rahab who lives on the side of the wall. He just needs a Jacob who's laying his head on a rock at night. Somebody that will hear his voice and let him start the work. And then he'll fill the earth from there. All God needs to do is get one tree started. And off of that tree will fall the fruit with the seed. Come back in 10 years and there's 50 of them. Come back in 20 years and there's 5,000 of them because the cycle is in the seed. If you'll just let God get started, God will take all the rest. He'll take care of all the rest. Let me tell somebody today, you've got everything you need in this Bible. Everything you need is in this word. Everything you need is in the word of the Lord. 
Well, Brother Urshan, I think the answer is my job. No, no, the answer is the word of God. If you'll get the word of God, he'll give you the job. He'll bless you on your job. Well, I think I need a husband. No, you need the word of God. And God will give you the husband according to his desire. I don't want to do anything without the word of God. What the Bible calls the seed of life. So they come to this woman. She receives them. And the Bible says she didn't just receive them, but she sent the soldiers out another way. She was justified. Now there's a lot right there, folks, because there's power that doesn't want this to happen. There's a devil that doesn't want this to happen. Mm, mm, mm. Every time God wants a seed to take off, there's a devil there trying to stamp it out. I can, I can take you. I can take you to Herod as he tells the wise men. He tells the wise men, take me to the babe, to the seed, that I may worship him also. And the wise men go, and, and they worship the Lord, and they're warned of an angel. Don't go back. God is infiltrating and he's going to cast down Herod's kingdom. And you're living in the wrong world paradigm. You're living in a kingdom that's going to fall. The life you're living is not the life you're supposed to have. The life you're living is going to be better in Jesus Christ. And the wise men did with Herod the same thing Rahab did with those messengers. They went out another way. When you encounter Jesus, you'll come in one way and you'll go out another way. I don't want to go out the same way I came in. I don't want to walk out of here like I walked in here. Some people were praying last night, God, answer my prayer. This is the answer to your prayer. Somebody was saying, I want to stop living like this. I don't want this power in my life. My goodness. I'm talking about existing demonic strongholds. That's what Jericho was. It's an existing demonic stronghold. Let me, let me bring it home in 2022. If your grandfather was an alcoholic and your father was an alcoholic and you are an alcoholic, God wants those walls to come down in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you came in an alcoholic, God can let you leave free in the Holy Ghost. You can leave another way. I can leave another way. I can leave another route. God wants to show us a better way. Jesus said it. He said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. One place he said, yet show I unto you a more excellent way. This is a more excellent way. Rahab was looking into a more excellent way. So she made a decision. The kingdom of God's coming. That's what she told him. She said, we know you're coming. The whole city knows you're coming. We saw what happened in Egypt. We saw what happened to Sihon and Og and, and the kings of Bashan. We saw the working of the Lord. We know the kingdom. Man, there's got to be that awareness. There's got to be that God consciousness. Thank God for that God conscious person in your family. You might have thought your mom was crazy when she said, baby, you need to get to church. You need to get to church. That, that's because your mother is feeling that there's a kingdom coming. And the kingdom we're in is going down. There's got to be an Abraham in your family. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost come on me right now. There's got to be an Abraham that knows this kingdom is going to end. And I'm going out looking for a kingdom that hath foundations whose builder and maker is God. Here, I have no continuing city. Maybe your Abraham is your mother. Maybe it's your grandmother. Maybe it's your cousin that keeps inviting you to church. Maybe it's that friend that keeps stopping in and saying, church starts at 10 a.m. The bus will be by at 9 a.m. 
All I'm telling you is receive that messenger. Receive that God's talking. God wants to save you, Rahab. God wants to save your kids. God wants to save your family. And if you'll receive the messenger. Thank God you received it. Where would you be if you hadn't received it? How many times did you rebuff them? I, who was I talking to the other day? I was talking to you, Sister Ruth. She said that her husband came to her and said, you need to go to church with me. And she said, yeah, 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 I'll go. She said, but I didn't go. <laughs> and, he, and another day came and he said, yeah, you need to go to church. They weren't married yet. <laughs> Let me go to church with you. No, no, no I'll, I'll go, I'll go. And, but, you know, you, 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 play, you play the dodgeball game. You dodge that voice. They, they run from the messengers. They rebuff the messengers. How many doors did Joseph and Mary had to knock on before somebody said, you know what? Okay, I do have a little room. How many, how many places did they have to go to and say, did you, do, you have, do you have any room? Any room for Jesus to be born? Any? Doesn't have to be much. All I need is a little bit. You got just a place out of the rain, just a place where I can lay him? Any, anything? God's just looking for a open heart and just a sliver of an opportunity if you'll crack the door to god he'll do the rest he'll birth something inside of you that you could never imagine who who could see the oak tree from the oak seed you ever see those little helicopter seeds you, you know what i'm talking about in the fall if from down the wind blows and all over your lawn and all over your driveway, all over your car, it gets down in the windshield wiper slots and it's, it's all, you know, you gotta vacuum them out and just, it's an afterthought. There's a, each one of those is a forest that has not yet been realized yet. Each one of them is a promise that if you would activate that promise, it would bring forth something that you could not imagine. Who could imagine the explosion out of the ground of a different kind of life? Let me say that again. The carnal mind cannot imagine the resurrection. The natural carnal man thinks that's what life is all about. Brother, you don't know what life is all about. If you think life is all about hanging out on Friday night and smoking a little weed and getting high and being with your buddies and trying to find a girl, that's not life. That's a broken shell. That's an endless cycle of addiction that's going to leave you destitute and broken. Oh, if you could imagine the life that God has for you, that if you'll plant it, what goes in is nothing like what comes out. What comes out explodes out of the ground and it grows and it grows and it grows and it grows and then it begins to produce and then it begins to live and then it begins to spread. I'm telling you the resurrected life is the most powerful thing this world has ever seen. Don't dismiss it, don't walk away from it. Let God do what God wants to do. I wonder if I took a poll of the people in here, if you could imagine what God's done. You came in because your girlfriend twisted your ear. Okay, 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 I'll go to church, okay. Sing inspiration, okay. See, there's that moment where you stop playing tiddlywinks with God. God's just looking for just that little bit of an opportunity. It's that moment where you're talking and he's talking and, and there, this is what happens when there's preaching. And, and you think that it's just a conversation with God and you're just talking to God. But there'll, there'll be a moment where all of a sudden the door breaks open. It's the kind of a thing that... He says, hey, could you give me something to drink? And, and you say, well, the well, the well is deep and, and you have nothing to draw with. 
How is it that you ask of me a Samaritan and you fight through the racial stuff? Uh, we have racism here in our world. And he said, if you knew who I was, you'd ask of me and I would give you living water. What is this living water? Well, where do you worship? Well, we worship here in this mountain. But you say, and it's just a conversation. It's, it's just regular life. And, 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 and finally, um, uh, somebody looks at you and the word of God comes forth. And, and there's that God moment where it's not just conversation anymore. It becomes something that strikes that profound, resonant, deep chord on the inside of a person's heart. Go get your husband. Well, I don't have a husband. Thou hast rightly said you've had five husbands and the man you're with right now is not your husband. And right there, you realize this is not just another moment. This is not just another encounter. If the door is even halfway open, God will come on inside and begin to do a work in your life. Hallelujah. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And out of that... Could she have ever understood? Look, look how humble that is. This is the New Testament Rahab. Rahab, Mary, woman at the well. It's the, it's the most humble of origins. Nobody else would answer the door. Who could have seen that out of that woman who had been divorced five times and had given up on marriage, that out of that could come the Acts chapter 8 revival? That when they came in, and they begin to preach Jesus. Who'd you say? Jesus. That's the man that said there would be water that would flow in our lives. Who did you? That's the man. I, I wonder, Brother Goder, if that woman was there that day when they preached that Samaritan woman. Who knows what God's going to do in your life? I wonder if you could imagine the blessings and the years of marriage and, and the, the, the financial blessings and the, 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 the freedom from addiction and, and the blessings of God and, and children and grandchildren. Who, who could have seen the explosion of resurrection that comes out of a person's life when they let the seed in? Rahab was ready. Rahab... The Bible says she hid them. She hid them. She defied the governing power of Jericho, and she hid them. There's going to be powers that don't want this loose in your life. They're going to tell you, don't you be baptized in Jesus' name. You don't need that Holy Ghost. You don't need to go to church all the time. Just stay home because God's your shepherd and you don't need a pastor. Jericho will do everything in its power to stop this thing from advancing any further. There's a devil that will send out messengers. My, 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 my. The existing ruling power doesn't want these messengers loose in your life. Watch, walk with me, walk with me through it. Herod doesn't want the baby born. Pharaoh doesn't want the children born. So he sends his army to kill it. These, the king of Jericho sends out his soldiers to stop the messengers. And there'll be a religious world that tries to stop us. It tells us that it don't take all that. Don't you think that's a little much? I had somebody come one time, they said, man, your church is very lively. And they said, does it, does, it really, does it really take all that? I said, it's not that it takes it, it's that we get to do it. See, we were Rahab. We were broken. We were the woman with the alabaster box. He found us. He came to us. And we recognized the value that the... My, my, my. When the kingdom of God came into my life, every good thing started happen. When the blessing of the Lord entered my life, every good thing started to happen. This is why we break our alabaster box. This is why we throw ourselves at his feet. You weren't there when he found me. You weren't there when he lifted me, when he casted seven devils out of me.
Rahab recognized the moment. And it was enough for her to say, I'll hide it. Have you ever read where the scripture says, thy word have I? Yes. Just, just hide it down in your heart. The Bible says of Mary that when she heard this, she kept these things and she pondered them in her heart. I want to tell my Bible study teachers here today, one of the greatest things you can do is just sow the seed and then let them hide it. There's a period of time where the seed goes into the ground and you hide it. There was a time when Jesus went into the tomb and he was hidden. <laughs> but this is seed. Seed doesn't stay hidden. It's just looking for somebody to receive it. The Bible says with meekness we receive the engrafted word which is able to save our souls. You just start thinking on this. You start meditating on this. He called I, I, I heard the psalmist say, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor setteth in the seat of the scornful. But here it is. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in this law doth he meditate day and night somebody needs to meditate on this you need to hide it down in your heart you need to get it down on the inside you need to read it think about it hide it away well why because he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water which bringeth forth fruit in his season If you don't hide the word in your heart, what are you hiding in your heart? I hope you're not hiding Hollywood in your heart. I hope you're not marinating on that. I hope you're not hiding TikTok and reels and every filthy thing in your heart, every unclean, wicked thing. If you hide those seeds, those seeds grow too. but she hid them. You know what the Bible says of the kingdom of heaven? It says it's like a woman who, who took leaven and hid it in three measures of meal until the whole was leavened. God just needs a place to get started and he'll take over the rest. He just needs somebody, a Rahab, that will give him an initial place we know Rahab had a heart towards God because the Bible says that she had flax. And the flax was laid in order. That's what the Bible says. I like that. I know it's just an insignificant detail to some, but not me. Not me. I know what she was doing with the flax. You know what Rahab did with flax? You know what flax was used for? It was used to make linen. She was weaving and making linen. You know what linen was used for? It was used for holy garments. It was used for the office of the priesthood. I like people that are starting to get involved with the things of God. They might, not, they might not know the greatest mysteries. They might not even know how it all fits together. But they're weaving things together as best they know how. I looked at, I looked at a person one time and I said, do you, know, do you know the story of Noah? And they said, yeah, 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 Noah. Uh-huh. He, he got off the boat. It, it rained 40 days and 40 nights. He got off the boat. And, um, and when he got off the boat, um, his brother tried to kill him. Maybe he did kill him. And then the brother went out in a fiery chariot, took him up into heaven. And I said, close. <laughs> Going to have to work on that. <laughs> And they said, you're going to have to forgive me. I don't know much about the Bible. But you know all I saw? I saw flax laid out. They, they weren't doing the greatest job, but they were just putting things together and putting that together and putting this together. They were going to weave. Oh, hallelujah. I just need the raw materials to be there. If you're just willing to crack that Bible, if you're just willing to say a prayer, if you're just willing, hey, how about we sit down and talk about the Word of God? I can show you a more excellent way. 
You might have put it together like Apollos, but there's a Priscilla and Aquila that's able to come in and explain it more perfectly. I just need you to start weaving. I just need you to start putting it together. I just need you to take this verse and that verse and this chapter and that chapter and put it together. Because whatever she was doing, the, the spies said, we'll work with you. And she said, let's make a deal between me and you. If I hide you and I protect you, save me and my family. If you will hide this, it'll save you. And it'll save your family. Now, Rahab, you have to do this. They gave her conditions. They said, if you'll throw a scarlet cord out of your window, there's got to be an obvious scarlet in your life. We've got to see the scarlet. <laughs> Man, I could preach another hour on that. But you've got to make this choice, Rahab. And when you make this choice, you're affecting your kids. And you're affecting your grandparents. Matter of fact, if you'll get all of your family and put them in this room, we will save them. Into your mind should come every other time God began to infiltrate another kingdom. This is exactly what he said at the Passover when he said, if you'll put that scarlet blood over the doorposts, something obvious, something scarlet over that doorpost, I'll save everybody in that house. Now, it's up to you. You gotta get in that house. You gotta get in this room, Rahab. You gotta get in this room, Mohat, Moses. You gotta come in and stay in the room. Let me just tell somebody, get in the church. Get in the church. Go out and get your brother. Go out and get your sister, because judgment's coming, this kingdom's coming down, and the kingdom of God is going up. Get in the room. Get in the church. Get in the house of God. Get under the scarlet blood of the Lamb. I can't fix anybody outside of the room. They said, if there's anybody outside of this room, their blood will be upon their own head. But if you'll bring them into this room, they will be saved. Are you telling me I've got to be baptized in Jesus' name to be saved? Yes! It's up to me. These were two messengers. They were telling the word of the Lord. If you'll come in, if you'll get involved in what God's doing, you'll be saved. Your family can be saved. Your children can be saved. There's got to be a Rahab that makes up their mind. This is why we preach baptism in Jesus' name so much. When we, and, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost. When we do that, we're hanging that scarlet cord out of your window. It's an obvious outward sign that you belong to Jesus Christ. Mm, 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 mm. Hallelujah. <laughs> Herod thought he was just mocking Jesus when he raped, dra draped him in that scarlet robe. Oh, he wasn't. God was showing that this is the one that you want in your life. God was hanging that scarlet on him because whoever goes into Jesus Christ shall be saved. I want to go into Jesus Christ. I want to be baptized into him. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And we tell people, get in the church, get in the church. How do I get in the church? Repent of your sins. Be baptized in Jesus' name. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what the messengers are saying. I'm, I'm trying to close, but I... I love the fact that there's two messengers. I like that. I like that because there's two messengers in your Bible. <laughs> you, ever, you ever notice that God sent them out two by two? You ever notice that in Revelation that there'd be two witnesses? You ever know, notice that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word will be established? There's an Old Testament and there's a New Testament. 
The Bible saw them as two olive trees that would stand witness before the Lord. I, I want these witnesses in my life. They are faithful witnesses. They testify of who Jesus is. Hear these witnesses. Hear this messenger when it comes to you. They said, if you come in to this room, you'll be saved. If you stay out, there's nothing I can do to help you. The word of God is what it is. Musicians can come. If I act on the word of God, it will save me. But if I don't and I stay out, it's delivered its message. It told me what I must do. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. There's people online watching right now. Hallelujah. Let's stand together in the house of God. Right where you are, I want you to lift your hands to heaven. There's a message that goes forth. There's a word that goes forth. There's, there's a good word that goes forth that brings salvation and healing and deliverance and power. I just need a Rahab that will receive it. I just need a Mary that will say, be it unto me. Right now, you can be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, right now. You have the opportunity right now to be baptized in Jesus' name. I'm looking for somebody that's been trying to weave some things together, that's willing to hide some things in your heart. Because ladies and gentlemen, this kingdom's going down. You read that newspaper? You see things spiraling out of control? You, you wonder, man, things seem to be coming apart. They are. They are. Come get in the room. Come get in the house. Receive the messenger. Receive the messenger and what he has to say. Let's lift our hands. I'm going to open this altar. Right now, right where you're at, I want you to lift your hands to heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to open this altar. I want you to step out. I want you to come. I just need a Rahab. I just need a Mary. I just need somebody that will come and say, I'll receive it. I'll receive it. It's the day of small things. I can tell. I can tell that things aren't right. I can tell that things aren't going the way that they need to go. I'm receiving this message. I'm receiving his word. I've been reading my Bible, Pastor Urshan. I've been talking to God. That's it. That's it. This altar's open. Come, lift your hands, lift your voice. God's talking to people right now. In the name of Jesus. As they sing, I want you to lift your hands to heaven and start to speak that name of Jesus in this sanctuary. Right where you're at, lift your voice. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I need some of our brothers and sisters to help us pray. There's some people here that need help praying. Come help us pray. In the name of Jesus, there's people that are here that want God to start something new in their hearts. To start something new in their spirit. In the name of Jesus. to the things of God. I'm opening my door to the kingdom that has come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is the kingdom of God that has come into this world.
were when he found you. Do you remember what life was like before that? The day he came into my life, into my heart.
That's the Holy Ghost at work right there. That's the Holy Ghost at work all over this building. People are being touched by the Holy Ghost. That's it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Here I am. being touched by the Holy Ghost, by His Spirit. Hallelujah. Let's love Him all over this house. Let's ask God to do a great work in our hearts. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I knocked on a door one day. I knocked on a door and a woman opened and she said I, I, I guess I'll take a Bible study and she didn't have a whole lot she she was a single mother she had a daughter and she had a, a little apartment and her mother lived there they didn't have much but what they had was in a row they were weaving together a life and it they weren't sure how to put it all together but they were willing to receive the message they were willing to hide the Word of God down in their hearts. Fast forward five years, both of them were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, serving the Lord. Right now, that little girl that was held in that mother's arms is a singer in one of the greatest choirs in Pentecost right now. Her mother passed away. She had epilepsy and she died. She died several years after serving the Lord. Served the Lord for a long time. Watching her daughter go on and her family go on. What a blessing when somebody decides to receive the messenger from God. If you'll go out, Rahab, and get your family, if you'll bring them in, you'll set in motion something that will save everybody. Let's lift our hands one last time. Hallelujah. 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 I've got the raw materials for a miracle. I've got an opportunity. I've got a place to hide his word in my heart. And I'll make room for Jesus. I'll make room for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God, praise God. If you're here and you're not, if you're not learning the word of God currently, if you're not in a Bible study or you don't know exactly what the Bible says, see us. We'll have people in the back. Go back and talk to them. And, and they'll help you. We'll sit down with you and we will show you what your Bible says. We'll show you the great promises of God and how you can put them into your life. I want, I want that word in my life. Good things happen when the word of God starts to be applied in my life. I don't want to live for this whole world. I want to live for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Brother Newton, would you come?
and dismiss us with a word of prayer. Tonight, prayers at 6 o'clock, services at 6.30. Let's come ready to praise God. Let's come ready to worship the Lord together. Amen. God bless you today. Praise the Lord, church. Man, ain't God good? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Good, good preaching. Good preaching. How true. How true. Small seed. Just a small seed. I see it in my life. So that's why I can tell you it can happen. It can happen. Anybody. I, I like that about God. Everybody's welcome. And he'll take the small thing and make it big and good and wonderful. Hallelujah. Good preaching, Pastor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Y'all, y'all forgive me, but you got to understand something. The church saved me. The church delivered me. Hallelujah. That's why I love the church. I love the people of God. I love the preach word of God. I love everything about God because he is so good. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray and be dismissed this morning. God, we thank you for your preach word. We thank you for your spirit that has touched us and kept us. We pray, Lord, that you would keep your hand upon us and bring us back tonight to once again glorify your wonderful and holy and precious name. We thank you, Lord, for this goodness and this mercy that is shown to us each and every day. We ask to be dismissed in the name of the Lord. Amen. You're dismissed. Amen.